Debate on the voice to Parliament has continued this week, with a growing number of MPs speaking out against the proposal. Barnaby Joyce gave a powerful speech to Parliament last night about the Indigenous voice. Take a look at this. Article 1 of the United Nations Convention on Human Rights says that people are born of equal rights and equal dignity. Isn't that a powerful statement? You're all born the same. You're all born of equal rights and equal dignity. You all have the same opportunities. What this will do is the perverse mechanism that you will be born of different rights by the reason of the colour of your skin. The powerful words. Former Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce joins me now. Thanks for joining me, Barnaby. We know there will be no Pleasure changes to the proposed wording for this change to the Constitution. Why is the proposal, as it currently stands, so dangerous for Australia? Because it's a constitutional change for your listeners. That means that once it gets embedded in the Constitution, the people who interpret it are the High Court, not the Parliament. It doesn't matter what the Parliament says, it's interpreted by the High Court. And once it's in the Constitution, listeners, you can't get rid of it. We've had something very similar in the past. It was called ATSIC. In fact, its goals and aspirations were almost um, equivalent to what the voice is. And the reason that it was removed in a bipartisan way by both the Labor Party and the Coalition is because it became infected with cronyism, nepotism and corruption. And it could be removed by regional legislation. Now, if ATSIC was in the Constitution, you'd still have ATSIC today with all the um, notorieties that, were, that became part of that fiasco. So we have to be really careful what we put in our constitution. And also the constitution is a document that is the preamble of how Australians see themselves. It's not an exciting document, and thank God it isn't. It's a very boring document. It's got to remain boring because that's how we keep peace and stability. And the whole pre precept of Australia from the uh, 1886, 1889 or thereabouts uh, constitutional conventions held in Tenerfield uh, was that we wanted to make Australia uh, an egalitarian state place of one people. This is reinforced in the 1967 referendum. It's reinforced in our national anthem. We are one and free. But this change says that you are not one. You are actually, uh, at this point, two. And you will be defined. And that is an anathema because we, we don't want Australians defined by their race, by their creed, by their colour, by their religion, by their sexuality. It's... The whole point of this nation is that we are unique in the world by reason of our abhorrence to sort of uh, hereditary title, to, um, to class, to people, to caste. And why would we insert it in our constitution and take the, fu the, the first step on something that should have been left behind in around about 1901? Yeah, it's important that we protect that egalitarian character for our nation. Um, let's look at another failure of the Albanese government to honour their word. Power bills are set to rise by up to 25%, a far cry from their election promise to slash bills by $275 a year for households. Barnaby, with households struggling with the cost of living, what's it going to take for Labor to abandon climate ideology and focus on the affordability of energy for Australians? Well, it's more than an ideology, it's a religion, isn't it, Amanda? Like, if you don't believe in it, you're a denier. They, they use the word denier, that, you know, you don't believe, and they actually use the word belief, you don't believe in climate change. So it, it rests in the, in the palm of absolutism. And that's a very dangerous place for an economic policy to rest. Now, what's so annoying and galling is you see... Minister Bowen dancing and prancing around the dispatch box, almost like um, comical Ali from the Iraq war, saying that he's fixed power prices. They're going down, he's made them better. <clears throat> the reality is quite evident in your power bills going through the roof. The closure of Liddell was a fiasco and it happened under their watch. Closure of Hazelwood was a disaster. And it's going to keep getting worse as the supply gets shorter. The price will continue to go up. There is not a country on this planet that has brought power prices down with renewables, not a country. And Australia has more renewables per capita, as uh, Matt Canavan brought up earlier on, than any other nation on Earth. So this is farcical. And it would, it'd be funny if it wasn't costing mums and dads money. It's, 
but you know, it's it's almost like they've left reality at the door. And it shows you, you can't trust them on power prices. You can't trust them when they say they're going to put a registered nurse in every in every aged care facility, as actually going to close them down rather than help them. You can't trust them when they said they're going to bring down interest rates. And by God, don't trust them when they said when they say the voice is not going to have a major effect. Barnaby Joyce, couldn't have put it better. Thank you very much for your time.